Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Child Anxiety FAC podcast. FAC stands for Frequently Asked Questions, and I'll be answering your questions about child and teen anxiety. My name is Dawn Friedman, and I've been working with kids and families for more than 30 years. Now I run Child Anxiety Support, a membership program for parents of anxious kids and teens. Let's get started. This week's question comes out of several different versions of people who contact me and say, you know, I've tried to get my child help and it isn't working or it hasn't worked. And then they're asking me why, why is it not working? So I'm squishing all of these questions together into one. And that question is, what derails child anxiety treatment? In other words, what gets in the way of the treatment being effective? So there are five things you're going to talk about. Are you ready? Here they are. The five things that get in the way of child anxiety treatment are information, time, trust, fear, and bandwidth. Let's go through these one by one. The first is information, and that speaks to the misunderstanding that the child should be the target of anxiety treatment. So often when I get this question, the parent tells me, I've had my child in for counseling and it didn't seem to help or it helped for a little bit and it didn't seem to stick. There are lots and lots of studies about child anxiety because it is one of the most common, if not the most common reason, why parents seek out mental health help for their kids. And those studies tell us that we need to be targeting parents because, as you know, if you are a listener to this podcast, We parents are the ones who are capable of shifting the way our family is supporting our children. Parents are the ones who can create exposures, which is to say that we can find ways to help our children face their fears. Parents are the ones who will be passing on and encouraging skill acquisition on the part of the kids. And parents are generally way more motivated to do these things. When we look at children, when we're targeting children as the focus of our treatment, we are expecting them to be able to interrupt the patterns that we know become ingrained in families with anxious kids, which isn't realistic. Children are not ultimately in charge of family functioning. We are as parents. And we're also expecting kids to remember and use really pretty complicated skills. CBT skills are simple in theory, but in practice are are pretty complicated. They require metacognition, which is thinking about thinking. And these are skills that children will need to learn, but also need to practice and relearn over time. When we parents learn those skills, we can remind our children and reteach them at each new developmental stage. Now, finally, anxiety is a really tricky beast. It teaches us that to be safe, we need to listen to it. We need to prioritize its voice in our life. While parents may be ready for their child to do things on their own, our kids might be perfectly happy with the status quo. That doesn't mean that kids like being anxious, but it does mean they may be much less motivated to deal with their anxiety and more interested in continuing to avoid the things that scare them. When we bring children to therapy and say, I want you to help my child do this thing that scares them. The kid is often like, I am not interested in doing the thing that scares me. And the problem is actually that my parents need to help me more. Parents, though, are a better place to encourage them towards that goal. So they may not want to sleep alone or let you go to the bathroom by yourself, but you might be more motivated to help them do that, in which case it makes sense to teach you how to help your child do that instead of sending your child to therapy to try to talk them into and teach them to do a thing they don't necessarily even want to do. The second reason child anxiety treatment gets derailed is time. Well, lack of time. Like you might not have the time. It takes time to unpack and examine family patterns. It takes time to create a plan to address those patterns. And it takes time to follow through with the plan that you've learned to address the patterns. Anxiety treatment is not a one-and-done intervention. It's something that unfolds over weeks. It's also not something that you can do for 
50 minutes, 52 minutes, however long the therapeutic hour is, once a week or once every other week. Whatever you're doing in therapy or doing in your parenting class or whatever you're learning, you need to take out into your real world, right? And you need to take time to figure out where it fits in your real world, to execute the plan, to look back at the plan and figure out, wow, what worked, what didn't work. Well, and a way to cut back on time needed is to get some direction. You know, it's it's interesting. I can't find the study now. I can find the book that the study is in where they mention it. And they talk about when parents read books about child anxiety, it's not as helpful as when they read the book and then get support around it. Like, it's not enough to get the information. We also need support in executing the information. And one of the reasons for that is it takes time. We don't always have the time. And getting direction and support cuts back on some of the time because we're not just figuring it all out for ourselves. We're getting some direction about it. Now, the third reason why child anxiety treatment can get derailed is trust. Namely, we parents, we need to trust the plan. Our children need to trust us. The parents I work with tend to be gentle parents, supportive parents, parents who are very in tune with their kids. It's their superpower, but it's also the thing that can get them stuck. And I know this personally because we didn't call it gentle parenting back when I was raising my kids. We called it attachment parenting. But basically, when you are so close to your children, it can be difficult to trust anxiety treatment because it does require us to put our kids in uncomfortable situations. If we have an anxious child who is struggling to, let's say, order for themselves at a restaurant. And we say to them, well, you need to order for yourself. I think you can handle it. But then they start crying and we know they're hungry and that they're scared. And we're trying to have this nice evening out with the family. And we see them suffering instead of enjoying this special night out. We may so identify with them as gentle, respectful parents that it's really hard to not just order for them. It's hard to trust that making them do something that is so difficult and often so painful for them will be good for them. And this is especially true when our children say things like, if you loved me, you would order for me, or I hate myself, and we want them to feel better. It's, again, our attunement and our attachment and this good relationship that we've built. It's hard to trust that making them uncomfortable, maybe even hurting their feelings, maybe being pushy in a certain way is good for them. So I I will say, I, I really get this. And where we need to put our trust is in that relationship that we've built, in that good, strong relationship. But also, in order to trust the plan, we may need someone who can kind of cheer us on, someone who can tell us, hey, remember the research, remember the plan. We, we had an idea about how to handle this when this would inevitably come up. Parents do better when they have someone to help guide them and reassure them, remind them of their plan, help them figure out, is it time to dial it back? Am I pushing too hard? Or is this exactly what we expected to have happen and I need to follow through? All right. Okay. So that's trust. And now the next barrier, the next thing that can derail treatment is fear which kind of goes along with trust. And here I'm talking about not the child's fear, but the parent's fear. So lots of us have tried to manage the anxiety. And then we've pulled back because we're worried that we're harming our child. This is another reason why I really love working directly with parents. I've found that if we have parents be the target of the intervention, then we have a terrific opportunity to work with that parent on their anxiety about their child's anxiety. And I think that's really the key. That's really the key. That's really where we can make the difference. Now, when you read the literature, they sort of get fixated on kind of this blaming mentality that the anxious parent, anxious parents making the kid anxious, the anxious parents getting in the way for treatment. I think it's just the opposite. I think actually this attunement, this this fear that parents have, when we take care of that as providers, when when we address that, 
then we are tapping in to the most powerful part of treatment. Just as we're working with the child on exposures, on helping the kids confront the things they've been avoiding, this is our chance to do that with parents, with love, respect, and understanding. And then we as parents, we we can be healed in our work with our kids' anxiety. And I just think that is so exciting. This is the part of the work that I love the most because I have always, always, always loved to work with parents. You know, people say, I don't want to work with kids because the worst part of working with the kids is the parents. And I'm more like, I don't want to work with kids because I love working with parents. They're the best part. The parents are the ones who hold the key. The parents are so powerful. And when we recognize that and support parents, oh my gosh, that is how we help kids processing our own worries. And I say this as a formerly anxious child. I was an anxious kid who then had an anxious child to parent. It is so healing to do this work because not only are you helping your child, but you're helping yourself. You, you really get to address the things that weren't addressed for you. Oh, anyway, I just love that part. It's my favorite part. Okay, on to the final barrier, and that would be bandwidth. Parents are by definition busy. We're often overwhelmed. We've got a lot on our plates. And I can sure appreciate that even if anxiety treatment feels urgent, that it's also difficult to find that bandwidth or spoons or mind space that we need to devote to addressing it. Am I going to explain how my program addresses this? Yes, I'm going to explain how my program addresses all of these. Let me explain how child anxiety support works. The central workshop is Strong Kids, Strong Families. And that's based on the Supportive Parenting for Anxious Childhood Emotions, or SPACE, program developed by Dr. Ellie Lebowitz of the Yale Child Study Center. And you may have heard of this program. If if you have an anxious child, you probably have. It is the recommended treatment for anxious children. has a lot of research behind it. So Strong Kids, Strong Families is based on SPACE and then has additional things that I've brought in from my 30 years of working with families. Strong Kids, Strong Families is six weeks, and one lesson drops each week, and it's a lesson that you read. Space is very straightforward. You do the things, you get results. That's the information piece. The first barrier in the list, that's how it's addressed in my program, via Strong Kids, Strong Families. That gives you the information. The rest is addressed by other parts of the membership. Now, you can get in there, do your six weeks, solve the anxiety issue. But most of us have those four other barriers. I address the time barrier by making the site incredibly accessible. It's better than a weekly group because it happens on your time. It's not 7 p.m. on Wednesdays and you've got soccer and you've got bedtime and homework and making dinner and all of these things. No, you go and you access the lesson whenever it works for you at your convenience. You can get to the site on your computer via a browser, but it's even better as a phone app or uh, on your tablet. So it's very easy to find time to take the lesson, check in, talk to me, etc. The trust piece and the fear piece, because those are really about us, the work that we need to do, those are addressed through the live components, whether that's watching the live webinars and posting questions in the chat or looking at the recordings and commenting on the recordings. Maybe it's by coming to open office hours so you can speak to me directly, or you can private message me and I answer really quickly because uh, the app works for me too. It's on my phone and I get a notification that somebody has posted a comment or sent me a message. and It's really easy for me to answer your questions right away. I like this better than the weekly support group too, because when I was doing that model in real life before COVID, then I was only available during that time. And with this, it's built in that I'm always available to you, that you can reach out to me whenever you need it. Now, the bandwidth part, that's a little trickier to address. And I'll tell you, I address it by using a membership model so that you have this community, this support, this information It's all ready and waiting, and then you get to control how you access it. 
you can drop in. You can go at whatever speed you want, even though the Strong Kids, Strong Family lessons drop each week. So by the end of six weeks, you have all of them. Some people don't move that fast. They move that fast maybe at the beginning, but in the middle when they're creating the plan, they're slowing down. It's a little more effortful and that's fine. You can rush through it. You can go slow. You can start slow and speed up or vice versa. You can take a break to process what you're learning and dip into other courses. There are other courses that kind of augment your learning that can help you figure out where you're getting stuck. I can direct you to those if you're like, I don't know what to do. I can say, okay, why don't, why don't you go here and, and see what you think? See if this helps you figure things out. You can lean on the supports that I offer. I am there to encourage you, even if you need to take a step back. And you can drop into Eve Herman's stress reset practices because they are really designed to give you some bandwidth to help you relax and take good care of yourself so you can access the bandwidth you need to do the rest of the work. Obviously, I'm a fan of my program. And remember, if you're listening to this in the last week of March 2023, which is when this drops, It drops Wednesday on the 29th. We'll be starting our spring cohort next week on Monday, April 3rd. If you join that week, you will join me in walking through the program. Child anxiety support is always available. I'm never going to do those closed and open launches that some programs do. You can enroll at any time, and I do that purposefully so that you can access it when you need it. I don't want you to say, I have to wait three months until a spot opens up again. No, you can come in at any time. And the Strong Kids, Strong Families workshop piece, that is asynchronous, meaning you can access it at two in the morning if that's what you want to do whenever you want. But twice a year, spring and fall, I'll be offering it cohort style, meaning if you join then, you'll get the first week lesson at the same time as I am offering extra supports around that lesson. So every week I have a live webinar, and during the cohort time, the live webinar will address what you're learning in the program. Second week, I'll be talking about the second week, and so on and so forth. So you can just head to my site to join me and know that I am here, and the program is here whenever you need it. Thanks for tuning in this week, and if you have a question you'd like me to address on the show, You can reach out to me by going to childanxietysupport.com and submitting a question there. You can also check out the program while you're there. And if you'd like to learn more about whether or not it would be a good fit for your family, feel free to reach out for a quick consult call. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next week.